come up here today to check out this Daikin BRV3 system. We had an E4 error, which is a low pressure error. And normally when you get an, a low pressure error on a Daikin system, the charge is mostly gone. It's not like it gets down really low and then gives you a low pressure. It's usually shot about 10 pounds. And unfortunately that's what we have. Normally what I check are my reversing valves. Normally they'll blow, the capillary will break loose and just blow the charge out and there's nothing up here. No oil on either side. I think the reversing valves are only on this side, on this unit here. This is an RE YQ120 PVTJ. So a YQ means it's like it's a single unit together. It's not manifolded like an MQ. So this is the first time I've had an E4 air and it's not been the reversing valve. Now we're downstairs uh, checking things out and one of the rooms downstairs has an odor of refrigerant oil. So we're gonna get up in there and look at the flares, the lines, and the coil. Take the leak detector down there and see what we can find. It's always something new, always something fun with Daikin. Now we're gonna open the door up in the room and see what happens. We suspect this is it. As soon as we walk in, it goes crazy. So I think we got a bad coil up here. So now we get to tear into this and see if the coil's bad. Now this is the unit that the, the room that all the refrigerant, the refrigerant detector went off like crazy. Took the pan down, looked through the, con, the condensate pump side and couldn't see any signs of oil in the pan. Nothing on the line set up there and uh, came up bupkis. No signs of oil staining in the coil. So the one thing I assume the other rooms were okay. So I went over here to the outside door to clear my leak detector. When I come back in, it was still going off. And people, like people said, you gotta use all your senses. Smell, sight. Well, right there. That spot, there's an oil spot. And they're easy to tell compared to water. Come on. Trying to get you, trying to brighten it up. There we go. Oh, come on, guy. There. Oil spots don't have, when they, they don't dry. When you get a water spot, they get a, the ring on them like that, they'll have a ring, they'll dry up and they'll make that brown ring where on a ceiling tile, oil spot just always looks damp. Looked up above there and one of the flare fittings is leaking real bad, got a bunch of oil on it. So we're gonna have to come over here, see if we got a cracked flare or if it's just loose. Fingers crossed on just a loose one, man. But if not, I'll have to redo a flare. All right, so let me get the other unit back together and come back over here and tear this one apart. All right, the issue seemed to be with the flare fitting up here. I had taken off the insulation here and cut this back. <clears throat> so what I ended up doing was I undid the flare, checked it for cracks. It had We had a little pressure left on it, so I took the flare nut off, pulled it back and checked the, the flare. Sometimes they get cracked and it seemed to be all right. So I went ahead and put it back together and I torqued it down and I know that I torqued it down harder than what it was when I pulled it apart because I took it apart with the torque wrench and it didn't pop the wrench so it wasn't as snug as it should have been. <clears throat> but I just went ahead and uh, charged it up, put the 40 pounds in there and it's running. I did soap bubble test. It's in heat mode so it's got a lot more pressure on the suction line right now and I got no bubbles. So, got it all glued up with Armaflex glue. And uh, 
going to have to call this one done. So time will tell if this isn't the only issue. It will show up. So it's not always what you think it was. I thought it was going to be a reversing valve for sure and end up being a flare nut that wasn't quite as tight as it should have been. All right, thanks for watching.